For all of us in San Francisco journalism, the massacre in Guyana hits hard. It's Ed Arno. It was 40 years ago today. More than 900 members of the San Francisco-based People's Temple cult died in a murder-suicide in Guyana. Under orders from their leader, Jim Jones, San Mateo Congressman Leo Ryan and four others were assassinated on a nearby airstrip after flying to South America on a fact-finding mission. Current Congresswoman Jackie Speer, in the center of this front-page photo, was traveling with the delegation as an aide. She was shot five times and left for dead. In the end, she was one of the few who lived to tell about it. And today she spoke with our Andrea Nakano about what this day means to her. Andrea. Yeah, it's a remarkable story. For the first time in 40 years, Congresswoman Jackie Speer did something different today. Speer says on November 18th, she usually thanks God she's still alive and goes to the cemetery to lay flowers on Representative Leo Ryan's grave. Today, she's opening up about staring death in the eye. On November 18, 1978, Jackie Spear laid on the tarmac thinking she was taking her last breath. Well, I was expecting to die. I mean, I was raised a good Catholic girl, still am a good Catholic, and I said the act of contrition. With five bullets riddled on the right side of her body, somehow she managed to drag herself into the baggage compartment of the plane, where she waited 22 hours for help to arrive. I thought it was over. And I thought, my God, I'm not going to have the life that we all expect for ourselves. I'm not going to live to be in my 80s and get married and have kids. That's not going to be my life. Miraculously, she survived, and 40 years later, she's telling her full story. Bleeding out of the right side of my devastated body. Speer talked about the Jonestown incident in front of a full house at the Book Passage in Corte Madera today. Her memoir, Undaunted, details her experience in Guyana, the numerous other hurdles she's faced in her life, and what's helped her overcome each tragedy. I call it the three F's. Family, friends, and faith. That's how I've gotten through it all. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, the Fillmore community came together to recognize the victims of Jonestown. A small memorial stands at the mini park today, but the hope is to dedicate a larger tribute to those who died 40 years ago to make sure future generations never forget the Jonestown massacre. You cannot tell the story of the 150 year story of San Francisco's thriving community of African Americans without telling the story of Jonestown and People's Temple. I also asked Congresswoman Speer about her most vivid memory from 40 years ago. Her response wasn't about her pain, but all of the other lives lost because of what she calls one maniacal, demonic man. And this is the first time she's written a book. She's obviously yes. told her story and talked about it, but right. this is the first time she chose to put it down in writing and, and words and recount it. And you know, what she said is that it's not just about Jonestown. She talks about all the other hurdles that she's right. gone through, and she said she wanted to leave something for her children and be completely honest about it. Wow. All right. Thank you for that. Andrea. Well, uh, on the 40th anniversary, a new memorial wall was dedicated today with a complete list of the victims. It stands at Evergreen Cemetery in Oakland, where many of them are buried. A woman who lost 27 relatives at Jonestown led the push for the new monument. We don't want to remember the horrors of the past, but we have to so that they cannot be repeated. This morning, an older granite marker with a partial list remained covered, and that's because it includes Jim Jones, the cult leader who orchestrated the massacre.